voila we have some crystals I got this box at a craft store I don't remember where um, you could probably find them anywhere but it's really really convenient it came with the box and all these empty little storage containers again from my time at dance I have a big collection of these so I am going to go around the outside of our ornaments so around the edges here where the seam is and decorate a little bit with some crystals I'm not going all the way into the middle here for the green one I'm only going to put it on the tips so just going around the tip here on all of the points and then with my clear one I'm going to do the same thing just on the outside of each of these points so now we just have to decide of our crystals what would look the prettiest now with the snowflake one I was almost thinking of going with these pretty AB crystal ones well that one's too big I was almost thinking of going with something like this but that's this is more like what I was thinking of but those might be too big I don't know let me see so they would set right there and I could actually just do two per point so it would help me as far as the number that I would need so I could do those so those are an option and before I decide that they are an option, I just need to see if I have any more. doesn't look like I have an awful lot of them. So that might be ruled out as an option. So that's okay. I didn't think I had very many of those big ones. So my other thought is that I could pick up on any of the colors that are on the outside. So I do have the pretty purple that I showed you at the beginning. These are larger sizes. Let me show you what it looks like up close. So those are larger sized ones. And on the snowflake, it would look like that. And the purple could be a really pretty accent against the rest of the snowflake okay just had to maneuver it a little bit I was getting a little bit off kilter so the purple is a definite maybe and then we have these really pretty ones Let me show you what this looks like up close so it looks like that it's got kind of a pinky multicolored look to it and on the snowflake it would look like that so that's an option and I have enough of them that I could do two per side so let me leave that out Oops. and my last one that I'm kind of strangely leaning towards because there's something about blue for Christmas decorations that I just love that deep kind of midnight blue this isn't that deep but it is blue with a beautiful color shift in there and if I did that one It would look like that. And my heart is kind of telling me to go with the blue. Although I like the purple and the pink ones, I think the blue is going to do it for me. So let me put these other ones away.
and we're going to go with the blue for that. On the green one over here, we have a couple of choices. We could go with a silver. We could go with a goldy color, which could be pretty. Understanding that the glitter inside there is more silver than gold. I think I might want to go with a silver, assuming I have it. Let's take a look. I think I do. I think these are all silver. So that's what that one looks like. I know it's hard to get it to show up on camera, but that's what that looks like. And since it is a silver, it will pick up nicely on the, although you can't really see it in this lighting, it will look all right. Let's see if I can get my lights down here a little bit. Closer. Ah, oh, where's my... That's not helping. <laughs> All right. But I think we will go with the silver on this one. And I have enough of them that it will work on the green. So now that we have our colors picked out, and I know what I'm going to use, we can go on to adhering them. I'll be right back. Okay, so I gave it some thought and played around with a couple of things, and I think I'm going to go with some UV resin for the final stage of putting the um, crystals on here. And it's going to serve a couple purposes. It's going to help us to adhere the crystals to the surface much better than the E6000 will. Plus it'll help to seal up the area between the seams of the piece and give it a little bit more stability and it'll hold our little gems in place a little better. And I actually have a mixture of both silver and this other weird kind of um, coppery color. So I'm going to use, oh my goodness, the silver. No, stop turning over. This is why I bring you guys on here to watch me do this stuff because... Sometimes it doesn't go the way we want it to. And that little stone did not want to come off to save its life. Come back here. All right, let's just see if we can drop it on. Again, it wants to flip over. All right, there we go. Because it's not all amazingly well done things. It does have problems. And I'm going to use my UV light. On my little torch to flash cure. That way I don't have to worry about them falling off. Okay. So that's what it looks like there. And I think it gives it just a little bit of extra sparkle on the tree. So if you're seeing it from the side, there's a little bit of extra sparkle. If you're seeing it from the front, it's the beautiful green. Or from the back, it's the beautiful green. So I'm going to do this one more time with you guys watching. I think we'll go over here. I put a little bit more on here than I actually need, as you saw me do, because I'm pushing it over the tip here, over the little bump, and then down into the back side here. First of all, because I don't want any weird little 
lines where everything stops and because this is a super flat surface it will give me a nice even look and it'll also be able to fill in those gaps like I was just talking about so carefully picking up my little gems pushing them into place where I want them coming in with my light and flash carrying and of course always when I'm done as always when I'm done I'm going to put them in my UV light and finish them off that way and luckily if there's some seepage on the other side the UV light doesn't necessarily reach there so I can come in quickly with my uh, stick or whatever it is you're using you could use a brush for this you could use a popsicle stick I grabbed this because I thought I was going to use the E6000 and then I changed my mind. So I'm just spreading that in there. Find one of my silver ones, pop it on. Oops, another one. Sometimes these are easy to pick up, other times they give me trouble. Tap them into place. And again, do that flash cure. Okay, so I have two points done. You could stop there. I'm not going to, of course, I'm going to do the top point, these bottom two, and then the one bound down here on the bottom, and I'll do those off camera. We'll come back to those in a second. In the meantime, I'm going to pick up our star. I don't have as many of the blue, so I want to see how many I have. So I've got one, two, two times, one, two, three, four, five, six, or four times six, so that's 24. So two, four, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. 18, 20, I've got enough. So I'm not gonna <laughs> not gonna belabor the counting there. So I'm gonna do the same thing here. Put some of my resin on. Get my little stick. Push that around. Get it all the way around like that. Oh, you might be a pain. Put my stones on. These stones are almost perfect because they are blue, but then they have a shift to green and red. So they very much mimic the snowflake, but at the same time offset a little bit. So it's not a redundancy of color. Okay, so there's the first two down. Let's do the other side. And if this all works like I expect it to, then like I said, we'll have reinforced our stars so we're not just relying on the E6000 to hold it together. Not that I have any disbelief that it will do that, but it's just acting, like I said, as a reinforcement in case something should go awry. We have an extra added stability there. And I want to do that part fairly quickly because I don't want the UV resin running everywhere. I'm trying to put just enough on so that I don't have this huge coat of resin. All right, so that's what that one looks like. If 
gives it just a little added sparkle and a little element of surprise on it. So I'm going to go around and finish both of these and I'll be back to show you the final product. So they're all done and these are completed. I finished putting the stones on the sides and put them in the, the UV lamp three times at 60 seconds each. And they're both complete. I realize these might not be everybody's cup of tea, but I thought I'd try something a little different just to give you some inspiration. If it's something you might want to try, you could use totally clear Swarovskis around here so that they're not a different color. If you like the look of the Swarovskis, but you'd rather have them be clear, I just thought a cute little accent of color was something that um, could kind of make them stand out and look a little different. So hopefully this gave you some inspiration, gave you some thoughts about things that you could do for Christmas, little gift ideas that, like I said, you could give to a, um, a person who has everything, a mail carrier, hairdresser, nail salon person, teacher, whomever, anybody that you need to give a little something to, but you're not sure what. Everybody likes handmade ornaments, I feel like, because they can be so pretty on the tree. And I like the fact that they're three-dimensional. They have a little bit more weight to them, a little bit more substance, and they're not flat on the back, so it doesn't matter which way they hang on your tree. Thank you again for stopping by and following along in this video with me. Like I said, I hope it gives you some inspiration and triggers some creativity on your part. I'd love to see some things that maybe you've made or if you want to share some images of other creations that you've come up with, I'd love to see them. Always looking for new inspiration, always looking for that creativity out there. Have a great day, everyone, wherever you are, whenever you are. Stay safe, happy, healthy, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.